Praise the Lord. A while ago, Brother Phil was talking about the influence of Brother Thomas. Indeed, I believe until today the reason why you and I are here because of that influence. That's what the Word of God says in the book of Psalms 92, verse 12, 15. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish at the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. I believe that is the desire of the Lord for each one of us to live a long life. As he mentioned in Psalms 92, verse 12 to 15, we could see here what a godly person is like. First, in Psalms 92, he mentioned, he compares a righteous man to two things, two trees. First, he considered valuable in the Middle East. These two trees are so valuable in the Middle East. A date palm grows about 90 to 100 feet tall, produces abundant fruit. It doesn't affect whether it's rainy or winter or drought. It produces continually this kind of fruit. And God likened us, the righteous people who trusted the Lord, people who walks in the will of God. He put an example that we will be like that tree. And uh, not only that, this fruit actually, the fruit itself is a low in fat and rich in vitamins. Just imagine that. How the Lord is so knowledgeable, how the Lord has given us that wisdom that the fruit itself is low in fat and it is rich in vitamins. It meets our daily requirement if you take that kind of fruit in the Middle East. And we, we try to uh, uh, put it in ourselves as we walk in the Lord. That means it is the, the desire of God that we should walk righteously. We should walk according, not according to our flesh, but according to the word of God. It is very important. Sometimes uh, we try to, there, there are times in our life we try to make decisions. And we really need to have the power of the Holy Spirit, as Brother Phil mentioned. We need the pouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Not to walk in the flesh, but to walk according to the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, this uh, kind of fruit, it regulates blood pressure. You know, God is so amazing. It's so wonderful how He created the plants and the trees. Not only that, it contains three times as much potassium as bananas. And it grows in the desert. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amazing. You know, it doesn't need uh, man's intervention, man's effort, man's knowledge. All you need is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As Brother Phil mentioned, that Brother Thomas, sometimes we try to Look at things in our own knowledge. But God used the foolish things of this world. It's, it's different how we see things. We might say that people might say that uh, this year is our economy might go down. But in the eyes of the Lord is different. He mentioned in Psalms 92, this will be for a whole season. Just imagine it produces fruit whole season. It doesn't affect us in our economy because we trust in the Lord. Because the word of God says, Curse is a man that trusts in a man and make it his flesh as his arm. We have to trust the Lord. When we are connected to the main line, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, brethren, you might be Americans. Probably your money goes farther than our money. But we are serving a living God yes. that provides, that bless, that gives us that joy. 
as the word of God says, the joy that uh, uh, helped him to continue the sufferings in the cross. Actually, it was that joy that sustains Jesus, seeing the fulfillment of what the, his father had given him, our salvation. Yes. Your salvation, my salvation. And I thank God that God doesn't look at us according to the way we people look ourselves or look unto others. Sometimes we judge people by the way they wear, their hair, how, how, how they talk. But I thank God He knows our hearts. He knows our hearts. God said, I, God said that we, might, we will be, rather be a God pleaser than a man pleaser. I might try to please people, but it doesn't please God. I rather obey God rather than men. It is also rich in mag magnesium and iron. Wow, what a wonderful fruit it is. Excellent source of vitamins, vitamin B. That's why he considered us as Christian who are walking in righteousness. Like a tree, a date palm grows about 90 to 100 feet. What does it mean? That means that people, even though how far you are, you could see, you could recognize that tree is a palm date tree. That's what the Lord told us. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. People will notice it. People will know. If you're really honest in your job, are you telling the truth? Are you paying your taxes? You know, those things will always go back to us. People, we are the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I might walk your talk or talk your walk. Sometimes we talk so much, but we don't even walk what the Bible, what the Word of God tells us. We will memorize verses, so it's the devil. He memorizes a lot of verses. But what the Lord needs is people who trust Him. People that are committed to the work of God. People, that, people who doesn't even count themselves no more because they died with Christ. Not only he compares us to a date palm tree, he considers us as a cedar of Lebanon. You know what this tree is? It is resistant to weather. Hot or cold, this kind of wood, I know we have carpenters here. This, uh, this kind of wood is resistant to weather. And it is a termite free. Termites could not, could not attack this kind of tree. That's who we are when we walk with the Lord. The Bible says, uh, the, the Word of God says, there is no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Because He is our protector. He is our tower. We could yield ourselves to Him. And every, in everything in Him, we have that uh, joy and love that we need in this world. Yes. That's why in those times, they used this Lebanon cedar as they built palaces and temples in the Middle East. What else characterizes a godly person according to Psalms 92? He said it flourishes in the courts of God. What does it mean, flourishing in the courts of God? In other words, he or she enjoys the word of God. He or she enjoys the fellowship. When people are gathering, he enjoys it. I just remember Sister Brenda a while ago, she was talking to us, she said, I just feel something lifted up in me while I was coming in. That's what we need. The presence of God that takes away our burden. We are here for a reason. You know why? Because we love the Lord and, and each of us have different difficulties, each of us has different problems. But I thank God that God, Jesus Christ, is the answer of all. Yes. Praise the Lord. In verse 14 says, Yields fruit in old age. Growing Christians serve the Lord all their lives. There is no retirement in Christianity. You might go old, my friend, but there is no reason for you to continue witnessing and living how the Lord wants us to live. Probably your, your uh, screw might be loosened up, but praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Yes, I've seen people screwing up here, but when you talk about the Lord, the Spirit still responds yes. to the Word of God. Because the Word of God is alive. Yes. The Word of God is active, sharper than two-edged sword. Yes. That's the reason we're here today. Because of the Word of God, it changes us. It's not religion. It's not somebody trying to convince us. You know? But it is the Holy Spirit yes. that brought us to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It is the power of the Lord that changes us. Yes. Because by ourselves, we don't have that ability. Yes. We've been trying and trying to do our best to do something, and yet we fail. But we thank God through His grace. He helped us to be able to overcome, to become victorious in areas of our lives. Praise God. That's why God is teaching us in Psalms 92. He said, as Brother Phil mentioned a while ago, Brother Thomas, he keep on learning. That is the secret. Keep learning. I have met people who are so successful. One thing they told me, they keep learning and they are teachable people. Teachable people grow and grow. People are, te who are studying and learning, they always grow. As Brother Phil mentioned, there is no certain portion of life that you will say, I have done everything, I am finished. No, all of us are learning. All of us are learning. We have different uh, problems in our life. Through those difficulties and problems, we are learning. Just like when you go to college, just an examination, you will know. If you pass or you fail, and we thank God for those uh, problems, either we pass or fail, and yet we continue trusting the Lord. Because soon, we pass that test, another test will come in our lives. We have sicknesses, you know, in our bodies, in our lives, but we praise God for that. Because through that, some people come to know the Lord. Hallelujah. I've seen people because of that. God, it is not the Lord's desire for us to be sick, but He uses it for us to come near to Him. And we thank God for that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why He said, keep learning. Learning more skills. You know, some people in the Philippines, when they reach their age of retirement, and they stop doing something, after a few months, when I met them, they become so old immediately. You know why? Because they used to work. They used to use their mind. But immediately they stop. Stop going to work. That's why the Lord teaches us to keep learning. Yes. Learning. Be a listener. Be a good listener yes. to other people. Then through that, you will learn more from the Lord. I believe Brother Thomas, as you mentioned, he was a good listener. He observed. Before he released word, I believe he observed first. Before he released words from his mouth. Next, my friend, he says, keep loving. Never stop loving people. Amen. Even the unlovable people, love them. Amen. You know, there are people that you don't really like. You know, I don't know why you don't like even just looking at their face as if you don't like them. But keep loving. You know, go to them, fix them some food, invite them for dinner. That's the way you could overcome him, overcome that feeling. Invite, send, send some food to that person. Then you could overcome. Praise God. Not only keep loving, but the Lord teaching us to keep laughing, laughing. It's very important. You know, like Brian and Sister, uh, David, they always laugh. And feel, it makes you feel good. Yes, because laughter is the best medicine. Praise the Lord. Do you know that there are a lot of benefits in laughter? I think they have now in, in the stage of hospital that they ask those people, instead of giving them medicines, that the, the special people tells them, you just start laughing. They let the, the patients laugh because through laughter, it is a medicine. It is so important to smile, to laugh, to enjoy life. We know we have challenges, but God wants us to enjoy and to continue the Lord and serving the Lord. Laughter is a strong medicine for mind, for our mind and body. Laughter is a powerful antidote to stress 
and pain and conflict. You know, when, when you and your wife have some disagreement, but when the wife starts smiling, when the wife starts laughing inside the house, the atmosphere changes. Our children are so, they're like a sponge that they, they will know if the mother is angry or not. When the, when the mother is smiling, everybody is happy <laughs> in the house. You see? It changes the atmosphere. Everybody is happy. Just imagine if I'll be, if I have a, a disagreement with Doty and I went to the church while driving, I'll be driving probably over speeding. You know? Just drive and drive. And if I could see people, I'll be, hey, what are you doing? Something like that. But when you go, when you go out from your house and your wife gives you a good kiss and pray for you, wow, you're driving, you're enjoying your drive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's something there. There's a, that's the, the word of God says. It is a medicine. Laughter is good to your health. Laughter relaxes the whole body. A good Hearty laughs relieves physical tension and stress, leaving your muscle relax up to 45 minutes. Uh, is that wonderful when we laugh? And laughter, it's free. <laughs> you don't need to pay anybody when you laugh. It's for free. That's why I believe Brother Thomas was a jolly person. I haven't met him, but I believe. Because you're here. He's a jolly person. He enjoys life. You know? Because that is what the Lord wants us. To enjoy life with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And lastly, I just felt this. Keep your language positive. To stay happy and young and serving the Lord. Enjoying life. We know we have difficulties. Keep your language positive. As I mentioned by Brother Phil. A while ago. What your mouth speaks, your ear hears, your brain registers, and your body responds. So keep positive. Walk, don't walk with the turkey, fly with the eagles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. I appreciate the Lord's presence with us here tonight. Appreciate him speaking by his spirit. You know, uh, Bobby there, he quoted the, that uh, scripture about cursed is the man who trusts a man makes flesh his arm. I was thinking about the time the Lord made that scripture so real to Brother Thomas. In fact, it was a very time where he was, he, they kind of had a plan within the system that is how he thought he was things were going to unfold and kind of God pulled that rug out from under him and things kind of fell apart and he was wondering what was going on and God made that scripture real to him right at that moment that I don't want you trusting in man or a system or a plan or a program. I want you to trust me. <laughs> I believe he made that real to him and that's why we can enjoy the walk because we don't have to have everything we just have to have him <laughs> he is everything if we have him we have everything that's what we need I was thinking as Phil was speaking there I thought about Jesus calling the disciples in fact I looked up one you don't have to turn there uh, it's in Luke chapter 5 if you want to look at it later but when he went to call Levi who would later be called Matthew he was a Pharisee at the time a tax collector you know what Jesus said to him his entire spiel to to Levi follow me that's what he said. It's in Luke chapter 5 if you want to read it. There wasn't anything else that was needed. There was no need for a plan or a program or a big anything. He just said, come follow me. That's what he's saying to us tonight. Follow me. <laughs> Not here's the plan, but follow me. You know, because I, I, you know, I think about that scripture. Cursed is <clears throat> the man who puts his trust in something else. That, that's far easier for that to happen than we realize or, or I think dare to think. I think it's why the Lord reminds us of these things and refreshes these things because it's so easy to settle into a pattern or trust in a system or trust in something else. I mean you can't see any more greater example of that than to look at the Pharisees and look at the religious people when Jesus came. The law of Moses that God had given as a means to draw them to him and bring them into a covenant relationship with him they had so latched onto that and so gotten connected to that, they didn't need God anymore. They had, the, they had the book, they had the rules, and because of that, they couldn't recognize God when he sent his own son to speak to them. May God help us to never let that happen. That we'll stay connected and hungry for his voice to listen to him. I believe that's his heart. I believe that's what he's doing. I just praise him. I thank him tonight. I thank him for his faithfulness.